Right, okay, so this is a video um, for how to configure a Cisco IP phone 303. Um, this isn't very scientific, unfortunately. It's just settings that I know that works, and this is what I do uh, to click on everything just to get the phone working. Uh, I think you can Google the individual settings, but long story short, it's a port number, uh, it's an IP address, and, and there's some authentication. So this is the general GUI. So the phone will boot up, and it will get a, a DHCP um, IP address instantly you just there's a setting on the phone there's a little icon you can just click to actually get the ip address you can actually set a static ip address here or you can set it on the phone itself um but effectively what you do is go to the admin login um obviously we've typed the ip address that comes up on the phone into a browser uh you go to the admin login not the user login and then you go to advance i don't know why they overcomplicate that but they do um so i just disable you can have multiple extensions on the same phone i just disable these for the fun of it um i'm not too sure that you kind of have to you can set all sort of default settings um and just general sort of phone setup here and you can google what all this means but it's not really relevant uh station name so this is some someone else's phone we actually bought this second hand so this is the details that's still in here I think all of this is all good to just leave as the defaults. Um, I haven't actually done a factory reset. Um, haven't actually done a factory reset of this phone. Um, so we've still got the old settings. So this XML service here is that you can have a telephone directory um, that works in XML. So you can actually go into the phone, go to a directory, type the first three letters of someone's name and it will give you their telephone number. You can authenticate to LDAP and all of this good stuff here. But none of this is really needed. Um, certainly not for this uh, uh, demonstration anyway directory enabled no regionals just see what's in here uh, I mean this is where you can set defaults of kind of default uh, uh, sort of speed dials and whatnot but again not important here um, just see if there's anything in particular that's important in here not really So the SIP is the uh, is is the place where we obviously configure the port range. It says here it can work from 560 to 580. We're obviously just going to use 560, but you can extend that out. This is all fairly sort of default stuff, and pretty much if you get any problems with this and you get any problems with your phone in general, just do a factory reset on it. Google that one, um, and that should be uh, and that should set everything back to the general settings. So all you need to put into it is an IP address and. Uh, uh, or a DNS address of where the VoIP server is and authentication details. Obviously, here we've got DHCP. Um, <clears throat> there's general kind of restrictions uh, that we can set up, but we don't want to do that here. And anything on the info tab? No, that's just generally a summary. So pretty much all we need to do is make sure that the line is enabled. Shared user ID. I don't think this is too important, but I do put all of these in anyway. So I go 1111, 1111. So it's just the user ID. Uh, NAT mapping enable, anything NAT just say yes because NAT's good. I mean this is particularly for a hosted VoIP environment, for a local environment it's probably not as important. Um, extension SIP port, no that all needs to be left as default. So your proxy is your actual server. So this is free PBX, this is a hosted PBX. So we'll just go to that, what is the proxy? Yeah, do we need an out, that just needs to be the IP address. Do we need an outbound proxy server for this? No. Uh, don't need to use that. Do we want to register? Yes, we do. The display name, uh, this is going to be a generic phone, so just you can put a user's name in there. That will come up on the phone when you ring. And the password, uh, I'll just check my settings. I'm going to delete this user anyway, so it doesn't matter that this goes out live onto the net. Uh, just give that a chance to just kick in. Uh, there we go. That was our password. Not terribly scientific. Uh, so we'll just put that in there. Auth ID 1111. Again, just the username, user ID. I think it's just this one and the password and the proxy that is required. I don't actually know what the rest of this stuff is, but I tend to fill it all out anyway. Uh, it doesn't do it any harm. You leave all of this as the defaults. And I think that is pretty much it. Shared extension, I don't think that's important. I think that is if you've got multiple users using the same extension. Uh, I think that is about it. So what we do is we click submit all changes. Then what you won't see here is that the phone will do a bit of a repeat process 
um, and we'll go through the life cycle uh, and do a repeat and sort of come back up with the network then try and connect to the remote uh, remote VoIP server um, this is pris I mean using Asterix and using sort of the free PBX um, VoIP setup it's pretty easy the, the web resources online is pretty good if you google anything you pretty much get any responses back where it does get a bit tricky is when you've got specific questions that are not freely available on the internet the forums aren't so wonderful um, and the actual free PBX support is something you have to pay credits for it's like 150 bucks an hour or something like that um, so my phone here is just going through the initializing network piece just get an IP address and he's actually trying to connect to the uh, remote host uh, and you know when it's alive um, because you'll get a green dial that comes up and you can probably hear that as being the dial tone to just confirm that uh, that, that phone is up and alive so that's pretty much it I'm sure that there's some more science that can go into actually understanding the the config around that but from our perspective all we need to do is just actually configure a person's name um, or not because this is a generic phone um, and then when you start getting into more advanced stuff when you start wanting the directories and using the XML service you can configure that from here but this is all pretty self-explanatory Cisco SPA 30 phone uh, 303 sorry IP phone is pretty good all round really and it's not too expensive <laughs>